ABL is the man. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Yes, you heard me right. ABL is the man and I like him a lot. He's a no-nonsense person. He talks sense. He lives and deals in reality. And he's a great listener and conversationalist. I aspire to be as good of a talk show host as he is, and maybe even have him call my show someday. Wow, that would be such a thrill. Don't forget, I'm a beginner at this still. Um, I was a musician and a singer for over 25 years, and I'm not used to having discussions like this. Most of my conversations over the years have been about set lists, bookings, rehearsals, equipment, musical and local celebrity gossip. Not to mention the many times I have to say thank you for some compliment or another, or sorry because I don't know every song known to man, no matter how much you hum it to me or sing it to me. But don't get me distracted. Not bragging, mind you. Um, I've just always been very approachable, if my height didn't intimidate you at first, uh, as long as you don't touch me. Personal space is very important to me. And usually folks don't know anything about me other than the set list that I just belted out in the middle of some dive bar, casino, or ice house. So I don't expect them to ask me about my kids, my political views, or my philosophy. Not even highly devoted political people do that. At least not until they've been to a couple of shows, anyway. But don't get me distracted. Anyway, being so new to all of this and wishing to wholeheartedly advocate free speech, no matter who, by doing my own call-in talk show, uh, I of course am grateful to folks like ABL who allow me to practice a skill I would like to hone and then offer to you all out there in cyberspace. And if you want to help me reach that goal, please make sure you share this and my other videos. Please also comment, share, like, and of course a donation would be the ultimate. I'm still giving gifts for any donation that you send to me. Links are all below and thank you in advance. Now back to the subject real quickly. Now again, freedom of speech is extremely important to me, especially as a vocalist, but is also the absolute cornerstone of our nation. And without it, we can't make educated decisions about whom we befriend, hire, associate with, or even vote for. I call into ABL shows uh, for conversation, and especially this one, with not only a chance to get my voice out there as a bit of an older lady, woman, female, if you want, with a little bit of life experience who has experienced most of what all females go through naturally and have since the beginning of time. But I also called in to practice my call-in talk show skills so that I can eventually do this too. And again, I totally appreciate ABL for doing this kind of show and this kind of work and for inspiring me to work on doing the same. Let me show you the clip of the conversation and then I will discuss further the premise behind what I said. Even though I had trouble getting some of the words out, Yes, I still get a little anxious and nervous when I talk to folks that I deem as celebrities to me. Um, I don't know if anybody ever felt that way about me on stage. I can only imagine. I didn't ask, and I tried not to notice that kind of thing. Most of the time, it was just small talk. But also, forgive me because I'm not used to holding conversations like these. Small talk is king in the uh, entertainment world, especially with your fans. And I told you why before. Um, I'm sure ABL can attest to that too. I mean, just listen, if you are a fan of his, just listen to some of his calls that he gets on his live stream. 
where the people just kind of drool over him, telling him how great he is, but don't get me distracted. Here's the clip. Good evening, Ariel. All righty, all righty, what's happening? Lord to God is here from, here's what I heard. How are you this evening? Everything's good, can't complain. It's been a while. Yes, indeed. Um, I just basically called in to give you my take on the transgender type of thing. Um, I actually at one time considered myself a feminist, but only like second generation. Now it's up to four or five now. And uh, as an actual feminist, if you if you will, um, the fact that just any swinging twig and berries, as you put it, <laughs> can put on a dress and claim to be one of us and then take away our rights bothers me. Yeah, I, I totally I totally yeah. understand because you know it's it's just it's just not right. You know, some things should be left for women. You have women's sports, women's spaces, that should be for women. I don't see what's wrong with that. And to have men just interfere regardless of how they identify is wrong. Well I can't I can't think of anything that's more pay uh what do they call it? Uh Patriarchy. Patriarchy. No, yeah. Patriarchy. <laughs> patriarchy. Yeah, I can't think of any more patriarchy. Patriarch pa patriarchal. patriarchal <laughs> than to claim to be a female and then just wipe us away. Right. I exactly. Exactly. That's exactly I'm what's sorry, going on. And they're never going to go through any of the stuff that we go through. You know? And then, of course, walking around seeing pregnant men, too. That was odd. And you know, I'm actually a live and let live type of person. I really don't care what you do behind closed doors. I don't care who you go home to. You know, uh, you live your life, I'll live my life. But a lot of these people aren't just living their lives. They're affecting a lot of other people and ruining other people's lives, from what I can tell. That's right. That's not right. <laughs> exactly. That, that's right, so but it's not right. that was just my two cents. That was just my two cents. That's the biggest thing I have um, about that. And of course, actually one of the things that's starting to scare me now, I don't know if you've talked about this because I have missed a few of your shows lately. Sorry about that. Um, but this thing about uh, deprogramming folks that used to, that, uh, uh, that uh, voted for a particular oh, orange person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that's, that's, that's a new wave. They want to try to deprogram us, say that, you know, it take a while to deprogram them, be very difficult to do it. It's like, no, I don't need to be deprogrammed. I'm just fine. Thank you. Appreciate it, though. Yeah. Like, well, like, well, it's like I always say, this. they basically gave this man way more power than he ever had. I right. mean, it's almost superstitious. It's almost like as if they, like, they think that this man could just lift up his arm say something and it's just gonna happen everything's gonna it's like no oh. <laughs> it's not how it works not at all uh, yeah i'm 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 glad i'm actually glad that they're underestimating underestimating us at this point because that's going to be their demise i believe it's, it's like a sleeping giant you know you're seeing this as just like brainwashed buffoons and idiots but they don't understand who we are and our intelligence level and what we're actually able to do so that's fine. You can sleep on us for now, and then you'll you'll see. It'll be okay. Oh yeah, I'm not worried. <laughs> I'm not that worried right. yet. <sighs> but I, like I say, there's more and more and more people talking about it on that side. I'm just glad a lot of them are are not in charge. However, um, if you want to connect the, I don't know, you want to call him a dictator that we have in office right now. <laughs> Yeah, he signed 42 seconds of orders. That's what that sounds like to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, as I say, at that point, anything's possible. And by the way, to any of the people in your chat, I've talked to, or I've talked to you before, and I've read I've read the chat before. No, I'm not trans. Yeah, don't don't even don't even read that because the chat, they're wild. And you know, they're great, but sometimes it's just, yeah, don't 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 even worry about that. It's all right. Well, not that it's anybody's business, but right. no, I'm not trans. And yes, I'm actually, I'm actually quite upset. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a large woman. Yes, I'm six foot tall, and I've got a singer's voice. That's, that's the only thing. I've been mistaken for trans before, but it's like uh, I don't think so. <laughs> right, because you're just tall. Only when I wear high collars. Yeah, I'm with you. So anyway, yeah, that was. I just wanted to get my, 
uh, thank you for allowing me to get that off my chest. I've said that to my husband on several occasions. Right. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're able to get it out there for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for taking my call. Have All a great right. week. Thank you for the call. Appreciate you. Good night. All right. Great call. Great call. Yeah, y'all are wild. Nah, she's a, she's a woman. It's all right, though. But, you know, I've seen tall women like that. And it's just one of those things. It's, it's, like, it's like abnormal. Yeah, great caller. Excellent caller. Great person, too. All right. First of all, ABL, thank you so very much. Big shout out to you. And I appreciate that you think I'm a good person. I like to think so, too. Now, once again, personally, I'm going to reiterate this. Like I said on the Skype call, I really don't care what folks do unless they're minding my business, especially my personal business, or if they're hurting someone else. Now, I'll accept whatever you want to do with your life as long as you don't hurt or oppress others or take others' rights because you don't believe that yours are being respected. Everyone, and I mean everyone, deserves dignity and respect, no matter how they identify and what they say and feel. I guess as a child of the 80s and being born after the civil rights movement, I also have thought that the whole purpose of being yourself and expressing yourself was not caring or giving a damn what others thought or felt. You be you, and the haters can go hate somewhere else, right? There's like 7 billion people on this planet. Why do people focus on one? And especially if they don't like them. I never could understand that. I mean, come on. Does no one remember Boy George, Michael Jackson, Cindy Lauper, David Bowie, Prince? I mean, how about just about everybody else on MTV? Don't even get me started on the comedians at the time. Now, they're one of the ones advocating for this stifling of everyone else. So, you know, and you know, just because folks don't agree with your choices or choose not to associate with you because your choices don't mean they hate you. It doesn't mean that they hate you. First of all, it isn't anyone else's business what you do, really. Secondly, it means that they have the right to hang with and associate with whomever they choose. Now, if what you choose wouldn't be what they would choose, why would you want to force someone into something that just isn't for them? It's pretty clear that you don't appreciate it when you think someone's trying to do it to you. I once read somewhere that love and farts are equivalent because if you have to force either, they're probably shit. So who out there is telling anyone that consists of less than 1% of the United States population that they don't have rights? Are you going to meet assholes that will mess with folks just to be messing with somebody? Of course, sure. But uh, they don't represent the masses, and I'm sure ain't gonna claim any of them for myself. So please, stop associating everyone with these jerks that are just jerks. Now, frankly, like I said before, everyone has the right to do whatever they want to do. I really don't care. My biggest problem with this transgenderism type of thing, especially when it comes to from male to female, is the fact that for at least the 200 years that I've studied over the years, women have fought tooth and nail to become equals. Now, I don't know what it was like back in the 1800s other than what I've read, of course, but this is about the time when women actually started fighting for their rights. They had to fight for their own property rights. They even had to fight for custody of their children back then. Because at that point, men were the dominants, women were second-class citizens, they didn't have those rights. And if a man decided he wanted to divorce a woman, he took everything, the house, the kids, everything. The woman was left without absolutely anything. So of course, we fought for our rights. We fought for our right to vote. We also fought for our rights to become uh, public servants. You know, senators, mayors, congressmen, anything like that. Up until the 1800s, up until almost 1900s, women weren't considered to do anything except for be in the household or maybe type for some man somewhere, be a secretary. We fought for our rights in the 70s for equal pay. So now 
basically you have just any man. In fact, a lot of times they don't even have to pass. That'll just come in and tell whoever it is, wherever it is, that they're a woman now and they'd like to take advantage of all of the work that we did, all of the work and all of the suffrage that we went through to take advantage of all of our hard work when they had the advantage to begin with. They were who we fought against in the first place and we're welcoming this. Meantime, you can't really accuse any of them of lying, but you know, that was another, that's another conundrum that I have. One of the reason why women were so uh, against men at one point is because they all thought that they were all liars. Okay, so they put on a dress and now all of a sudden they're not liars anymore? They're not abusers anymore? Just put a dress on them, put a dress on them and put some lipstick on them? And all of a sudden they're not our enemy anymore? I actually, from what I can see happening in the sports, now I don't know if this is going to progress onto anything else. It looks like the military, it looks like, you know, anybody, any man can walk into any office now and be more protected than the women that fought for those rights to be equal in the first place. This is my problem with that. I don't care if you want to be a woman. But don't come in being a woman and then as, as an actual male and pretend that you're not being patriarchal. In fact, now men are coming in, pretending like they're women, and acting like they're better women than women. How patriarchal is that? So when I say that this bothers me, it bothers me because women throughout the years have fought their asses off to become equal, equal pay, equal rights, equal personage and now just any man can come in and say that they're a better woman I have a problem with that if it hadn't have been for suffrage if it hadn't have been for any of the other things that have gone through that, that women have gone through throughout the years I would say whatever but women have fought way too long and way too hard to not to be oppressed by men and in my opinion, I'm not talking about everyone, but the ones that you see, the ones that, that they're forcing upon us, if you will, the ones that, you're, that have gained celebrity status and everything like that, like the sports people and uh, the, the men that couldn't make 300 in their own categories, but come into women's categories even after a sex change, so they say. We're not even allowed to ask at this point. Men come in, have a sex change, and take a few female hormones, and they become number one in the division. In fact, they sweep all the divisions at that point. Mind you, as a woman, would you really want to compete with someone that you have zero chance, absolutely no chance of ever beating? And I'm, I'm sure that no matter how long or how often that person takes the female hormones or whatever, they're always going to have the advantage on you. The bones are longer, the muscles are stronger. The physique is just more jock-like. I, I won't even say male. I'll say the physique is more prone or more capable of sports events. There's actually laws on the books that give women the right to have their own sports and to compete and do things minus the penises, if you will, minus the big muscles, minus the major advantage even effeminate type men have over most women. So yes, I do have a problem with you you know, I don't have a problem as you identifying as a woman and I don't have a problem with you de deciding that's what you want to be or anything like that, but to come in and decide that you're a woman and in turn take away an actual biological female's rights after we fought so hard for them throughout the years and there's actual law on the laws on the books that you're going against 
And I, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance if this hurts anyone's feelings. But I'm with Blair White on this. Uh, she does. She considers herself a woman, but she also remembers where she came from and knows that she's always going to be different. And that's just the way it is. In fact, in a thousand years, when you get dug up by philanthropists or, or uh, scientists in that aspect, they're going to take your DNA and wonder why you were wearing women's clothes and have silicone implants everywhere. Because your DNA is going to say male. That identification, even your birth certificate is not going to matter at that point. So, you guys always say, follow the science, follow the science. DNA is science. I don't care how much lipstick you want to wear. Hell, I'll even help you wear it. I don't care. But you're not going to take away my rights that we fought for for the last 200 years. But in my experience, folks, most folks just don't care as long as you don't try to obstruct their right to survival, whatever their definition of that might be. I heard someone, I believe it was on the Jimmy Dore show the other day, talking about getting back to the basics in order to unite, if you will. And I want to take that a little farther than what the golden rule, which is what he cited on this show. But he, pro he proclaimed that we needed to start heeding the golden rule again, which is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, don't mess somebody up if you wouldn't want somebody to mess you up. You want us to put it plainly. So in going farther, I have to ask the question, why not add the old classic back? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Why do you care what anyone else that you may never see again, encounter again, probably has zero impact whatsoever on your life thinks? Why? Why would you care what anyone else thinks? If you're being you and you're confident in you being you, why would you give a damn what anybody else says or thinks? Does this person pay your bills? Do they date or influence your family members or your friends? Are they elected leaders or bosses or professors or teachers? I mean, seriously, what true impact do folks like that really have on your entire scope of life or the choices that you want to make? Why is it so important that everybody else acknowledge you? I mean, you know, seriously. Seriously, and I do mean this seriously, only you can allow shit from ignorant idiots like this to bother you. And here's a tip. As humans, and for as long as I've been alive, no matter what you do, say, or become, there's always gonna be that one someone that feels the need to criticize, condescend, sometimes even bully. Now, I have found that people like that usually have way huger problems than what they're trying to impose upon yourself. And so they do project that onto others. A lot of times they see that you're being yourself without a care or thought of others and wish that they could do that themselves. These people at this point are just jealous cowards. So they go into their own survival mode or what they think is their own survival mode, if you will, and try to bring anybody else down. Newsflash! 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 This shit happens to everyone. Don't believe me? Just scroll back and watch some of the comments while I'm on screen with ABL. It even just happened to me in this video. No matter what you identify as, no matter what you look like, or what you do for a living, etc and etc you can be the skinniest smallest person on earth you can be the largest person on earth you can be the most different person on earth you're always going to get some jerk off that has to mouth off it's humanity what you do with that is what makes the difference 
All right, there's always gonna be somebody critical. There's always gonna be somebody trying to have power over you because they don't feel like they have any power. You know, you could actually say the same thing about either side of these types of situations. But again, don't get me distracted. Now, am I saying this type of behavior that I'm talking about from these few assholes is right? Of course not. Remember, I said everyone deserves respect and dignity, including these assholes. They aren't assholes for no reason, but it does work both ways. And not everyone, actually no one, is ever going to act the way that you expect them to. And from what I've experienced, no one is exactly reciprocal of treatment from anybody, no matter who they're dealing with. Some people actually may need to watch out, if that's the case. Hell, my own mother still tells me that there are things in my life I shouldn't be doing and how I pay my bills. And frankly, if I did everything that everyone else told me to do, I wouldn't even be doing this video right now. I'd be curled up in a ball under some cozy blanket somewhere playing cards on my iPad and drinking hot chocolate all day. Although, had I done that all my life, I would probably be doing that under some bridge somewhere. Every living thing on the planet is wired to survive, and as free people, we are able to define what that means to each of us, as long as it's not hurting or oppressing others, and I mean all others. I mean, think about this. There are actually folks out there that will tell you that they cannot survive without their smartphones. It's going to be real difficult to live in a situation in an environment where you don't know where folks are coming from. Instead of talking to you about something they deem to be problematic, they will call authorities and claim something that probably won't be true, but will screw your entire life up anyway. Probably for no reason. At that point, you won't even know why, and you'll just be out of the streets or in some jail cell somewhere, being abused with no regard, and that person who self-censored and then censored you will be able to do that again and again and again. I want folks to talk to me. It's integral to one's survival. You have to know who's for you and who might be coming for you. And don't forget, censorship is actually a double-edged sword. Not only does it prohibit people from speaking about things, but it also prohibits the people that want to hear those things from listening and hearing them. It is a double-edged sword. Again, if you've watched any of my videos, either comedic or serious, I have and always will advocate for free speech. Otherwise, how will you know who to associate with and how do you know who to avoid? Now, if you know anything about nature and the natural world, you know that to survive, some animals fight and some animals hide. Humanity is no different. Humans just respond a little bit differently due to the fact that most of us can think and reason. Or can we? Also, if you'd like to see more about what I say about the deprogramming topic as well, I've actually, my last video right before this one that I made was all about that. There was an article in Vanity Fair of all places describing how we could deprogram people that voted for Donald Trump. I think it was quite interesting, but I also thought it was quite disgusting. So make sure you check out my last video from last week. Once again, I want to give a big shout out to ABL for all that he does for people like me and you. He's out there taking heat, which I'm sure I'll get plenty of after this video. He's out there though taking heat for what's actually right and what's actually real. And he is also giving others that feel the same way, and even folks that don't, a chance to voice their opinion too. It's almost like as if he's one of those types of people that has enabled the forgotten to get their voice out there, which is what America is actually all about. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. If you'd like to help me become a live call-in talk show, like my favorite host, ABL, please make sure to share this and all my videos. Subscribe and like my channel. Comment and of course a donation would be the ultimate. All my links are down below. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.
Thank you.